Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. So I did a little bit of online purchasing uh, the other day and I ended up buying another one of these uh, RFID copying um, units and I also bought the equivalent here which is this one here. So without knowing which one is superior I bought both and then I'm hopefully going to find out which one does what function. I also then started seeing that this one here is the Proxmark, uh, this is the one that's meant to be top of the line and can do all sorts of cracks and all sorts of formats, but I'm yet to work out what it can actually do. I did buy one a year or two ago, did a video on it, but unfortunately I gave that one away to somebody else who was more knowledgeable than me, so I wasn't able to um, sort of go through and find out. I was hoping they would um, be able to tell me what's what and then I could kind of, you know, work it out from there. But I got nothing back and I never saw the device again, so I ended up buying another one. Anyway, in my purchasing um, haze, uh, late night purchasing haze, um, I then bought this, which is the Chameleon Mini. Now, by rights, it should be able to um, emulate eight different cards. And one of the reasons I got it is because it can do some of the MyFair cards and it can help crack and download keys and stuff like that. So this is all very important information. Also, it's very small and tiny and I thought, well, I go to multiple sites and some of them now are starting to use uh, cards like this where you can't copy them with the simple machine. So I bought this one and by using the smartphone app, which is quite easy just to download from the app store, I'm hoping to uh, get that working and see how that goes. If anybody knows where the instructions are, it really would kind of help, but unfortunately, um, I don't have the instructions. So you simply just do that, uh, open the app, push connect, it's found it there and then away you go. From there you can set up all the different cards that you want to set up. Uh, you come here and then you can select the type, unique ID, the memory, uh, unique ID clone, upload, download, so and you can also sniff keys from the reader as well with this. Uh, so it has quite a lot of functions um, but unfortunately I don't know enough about it to know how to use it exactly right. So it's going to be back to the drawing board and the training board with that one there. Uh, but it is a good little device because of the size of it. You can put it on your key ring or just keep it in a little pouch. And when you need it, you can use it, use it to sniff, use it to crack some of the other more complex codes or whatever. So that came with a little tag like that, and that's probably going to sit in that box until uh, I get more time to look at it. The next one here is the Proxmark. Um, that's, once again, I'll have to hook that up to the computer and it'll take me a little bit of time. Got to get the instructions learned on how to use that. So let's get to the meat and the sandwich, and that's this um, device right here, which makes it easy to copy and clone tags. Now, I have one here as an example, so I'm just going to uh, push the scan button. It's going to go through, and it's going to find it, and then we can try writing it to one. Okay. Card number is four, four, seven, seven, nine, six, six. So these little tags right here is what came with the machine. These are an emulated ID tag. What that means is it can emulate the different formats. So I'm going to just right try, and, try and write. Didn't like right it. Failure. All right, fine. Let's try that again. Let's try one at a time. Right success. Okay, so there we have it. So there's our code. Let's read it again. Read success. We got, we got that four, code. Four, seven, seven, nine, six, six. Okay, so we've done a perfect clone four, of that. Four, seven, seven, nine, six, six. Here's a digital lock. Wake up, digital lock. The door has opened. Okay, so that that's working. That's basically what it what it's kind of about. So that's this unit right here. Okay, <clears throat> has a scan function, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can put inputs Please into the it. Card number. And um, you can write to the, a lot of the systems, put in the unique ID and all this sort of stuff. And you can also connect onto the computer as well, all of which I've never done. It's currently running off USB. It has a slot on the back, has an annoying uh, voice, and can also take uh, AAA batteries there as well, four of them. All right, cool. So that's that device. Let's have a look behind door number two. So this one here is more expensive, and this is basically, you know, what I want to find out. I want to find out kind of what's going on with this one because why is it more expensive? What can it do? Uh, to start off with we've got English and Chinese button made by NSNV. Oh by the way um, there's two models of this one. One's really crappy and one's really good. Oh here's something I haven't seen before. Instructions. Something you don't normally get and I'm also getting like three or four slots for tags and we're using the C, um, C connector, the new one. So let's do that. I'll just put that over there. 
I've got one here actually on the bench. Everyone seems to be going to that new, that new style. All right, time to power this up and see what happens. So the nitty gritty of these two type of machines when comparing apples against apples, it really would come down to the amount of formats that they can do automatically scan and automatically clone and the emulator tags that you have to go with it, which can emulate that particular format. The online cracking as well is something which would, I'd have to go into quite some depth to find out, but I believe they're like Ford and Holden. I believe they're neck to neck. So what one should do, the other one should do. But as far as which one's better, Oh, it talks different language to me. Oh, it has different language too. Okay. We've got a touch screen happening here. Negatory. All right, let's go to settings first of all. And let's see. Oh, oh, oh. We're in Chinese. We are completely up the creek now. Oh, the instructions are in Chinese too. Now, this one here it seems to have the iCopy um, app or program, which is something on this one here I had a lot of trouble getting, and it kind of just put a, a virus on my computer. So, okay, so it can decode the blocks. That's all I can tell from there. Display, speaker, navigator, batteries. Does this one take batteries too? Have a look. So you put the card there, there's no bit of elastic to kind of hold it in. This one does take batteries too, but it is being a bit stubborn. I just want to show me your batteries. Show me your batteries. All right. I cannot get this thing open. Anyway, let's go back to here. Batteries sh should be allowed in this device if you can get the battery compartment open that's the question okay battery compartment no mention of what type of batteries it takes but most likely four triple a's or input voltage of that all right so we've just uh crashed this machine now no idea what that means no idea okay so let's go to okay uh I guess we could just put a card up against it and see what happens. Let's try that. Read. I've got to select read first. It looks like it can do some remotes too. Okay, so 13.56 megahertz. Okay. Can we try writing it? Let's just try writing it to the same card. Ooh. What's that orange thing? Is that part or is this... Uh, it's just part of the plastic on the front. That's okay. That orange worm is nothing. Okay, so we've established that it can read and write, and uh, we should probably do some sort of test on that. Let's grab another one of these little tags. Okay, put that up the back of it. Read. It's really good if you want to learn another language. Okay, so there's our code there, 77966. Okay, let's try one of these happy tags. See if we can write that now. Okay, so it did. It wrote to this happy tag, and they are pretty cool looking, uh, sexy tags if you want to give your customer. So let's try that now on this uh, bad boy. Wake up, have a card, have a card. Negatory. Alright, let's try that again. Uh, right. I think it's. It, did you hear that? It said, "Yeah, it's shit, mate." That's what it said, and of course, that didn't work. Okay, so if it says that again, we know it's not working. Right. Oh, was that shit back? Yeah. Okay, let's try that now. Wrong entry. Okay. Let's try one of their little tags that it came with. Right. Not good. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Apart from it being in a different language, which is not very good, uh, let's have a look here and see if we can change the menu. So let's uh, clear back button, over to the works button, okay. Let's try first cab off the rank, okay. Nothing to see there. Go down, okay. 
nothing really I can change there. Go back. Oh, oh, this is Wi-Fi. Okay, so ah, that's what it is. This can connect to the Wi-Fi for decoding. Um, it can connect to the internet, so you don't need to use it with the um, computer. So when I had this one, I always had to plug it into the computer to do the decoding or whatever, and then it, it put a it put a virus on my um, laptop. So that's why I went with this one, which is more expensive because it has a Wi-Fi, which means that we can do the online decoding without needing to plug in. So that's that that's what it was that made this good. Ah, oh, there we are, English. See, you really can just get through by pushing a lot of buttons. You don't need instructions. Instructions are for Ah, there we go there. Look at that. Format card. Uh, oh, we can format. Okay, let's try that. I don't have that button before. Format card. Okay. Format. Place a card in the seat sensor area and click OK to start formatting. Okay. Formatting. Jeez, it's taking longer than an SD card. Format failure. Can't win them all. Okay, uh, network language voice. Okay, this is interesting. This model here didn't have um, a way to take the voice off, so I just simply pulled mine apart and um, de desoldered the little speaker. And a lot of people have said, oh, how did you get it to shut up? Well, I, I, I did it that way. Okay, volume. Let's see if we can go down here. Yep. Okay, actually I wouldn't mind hearing what it sounds like in English. Uh, known key decoding, okay, let's try that one. Uh, enter the password, back decode style ID note. Okay, so I'm seeing a, a fair bit more than I did on the other one. That is, that is for sure. Clear, okay, back, back, back. Okay, okay. Okay, known key decoding, clear library. Okay, didn't know we had a library. Update version, connect to server failure. Okay, let's put in the network setting and see see if it, it comes alive. Generating networks. Okay, so now I select my one. I'm just going to take this off camera here just so I can put in my password. Um, now I've got to scroll. I've got to scroll with these little toggle things cross the other way okay so now we actually should be on the network Let's see if we can go to system info. Okay, so that's the serial number and all that sort of stuff. Version update, okay. Connecting to server. We did connect to Wi-Fi, so hopefully it should be good to connect. It's taking a long time. I guess the server's a long, long way away. Failure. Okay, so where are we? Okay. Okay, we've got languages, we've got format card. We, so we've pretty much done the menu now, okay? So let's go over now and go copy, okay? And let's just put our, please put the card there. Okay, so we will go detect. Okay, read. Okay, so it found it fairly easy. Let's read this one. Same card. Let's go this one different card okay okay so let's go back and read this one okay let's try and write this one probably won't but we'll try it anyway failure that's why you need the right tags failure ah successful Okay, so this is our tag here. Let's bring up the Samsung Digital and it's working. Well, it's actually getting stuck. The door has opened. The door has locked. Please remain seated. 
Oh, thanks, Samsung. Thanks for sharing that. Card. Okay. All right. So we've successfully cloned um, on this on this one here. As for the formats it does, that would be a mystery. And as for if it can do some of the um, some of the other ones, so it's uh, unusual because it's coming up with the right code, but we're getting read failed. The code that we just tried to put in there. Hmm. And that tag didn't work either. Try it one more time. No, it didn't work. Okay, so let's go back now. Um, decoder, let's go OK. Let's try and decode this uh, tag. Start the password library offline decoding by the read key. Read successful, please continue into the copy card or press the right key. So, okay, it's got that little computer sound going. All right, so if we go, uh, please continue into the copy card. Go, okay. Card, we can't write, detect, edit, we can't. Okay, so we can only basically, um, we can only basically uh, do a clone on that. Let's try detect now. Read. Okay, detected it. Read successful, please. Approach device detection. Okay. Let's try writing it. Oh, it says uh, detection. We've got a detect button here. Nothing. Right. Okay. Anything under there? No. Nope. So that's it. Okay, so what separates these two apart from each other? Well, this one has a better menu. This one has Wi-Fi. This has um, offline decoding by using Wi-Fi so you don't need your computer. This one seems to have a few more settings than this one here, which seems to be just a simple copy, read, write. Um, so yeah, more functions on this one. So better device, yes. And possibly with some of the more encrypted cards which are coming out, this one will probably have a bit more of a chance than this one. So it might be worth a little bit more money. Micro SD card. Looks like there's something there, but it doesn't, doesn't show you. I can see a slot in there. Maybe you have to peel the rubber up. Or maybe they didn't even put it in there because I can see it says micro SD but it's not cut out. Oh look at this. There we go. There's the slot. I don't know why you would want a micro SD on it but um, we'll find out. Okay thanks for watching.